Hi, my name is Paris Wolf, and today we're going to be working on our cryptography, questions 21 through 30 on the practice test. Which best describes a brute force attack? A brute force attack is an exhaustive search to attempt every possible mapping or key. The other options on here, intercepting and modifying data between two points, that's referring to a man in the middle attack, and that's when your system's connecting to another device and a bad actor is intercepting that message and then modifying that data. The third option, when the attacker has both has access to both the ciphertext and the corresponding plaintext pairs, that is known as a known plaintext attack. And the last option here, that is known as frequency analysis. So in any language, there's going to be certain letters or symbols that occur more frequently. For example, in English, there's E or the vowels A, E, I, O, U, um, followed by T and A and O and so on. And this distribution of letter frequency is relatively consistent uh, no matter the language, and it makes it easier for them to break in encryption. So this is a technique they use, frequency analysis. So again, the answer for question 21 for brute force attack is an exhaustive search to attempt every possible mapping or key. Question 22. What is a cryptographic attack in which an attacker has access to both the plaintext unencrypted version of a certain data and its corresponding ciphertext encrypted form? Well, we just look at that. That is known as a known plaintext attack. So since we just looked at the bottom three, we're just going to look at the Kaziki examination. Uh, which is a technique that they use to, one of the techniques that they use to break a veneer cipher. And the highlights on that is that um, it relies on observation when the same keyword is used multiple times to encrypt different parts of the plain text. And for example, on the uh, veneer cipher, if they, the key length has to be a certain, certain length to match the plain, uh, the regular text. And so the key might be like the, 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 and so they're able to find a pattern with the Kosicki examination. So again, the answer to question 22 is the known plain text attack. Question 23, what is a prime number? I didn't put any options on here. The prime number is a number that is only divisible by itself or the number one. And the reason that they use uh, prime numbers in Cryptography is that it's just uniquely mathematical and it makes for very good encryption. Question 24, what is 30 mod 11? So the way you're going to get the mod is going to be the difference of 30 divided by this 11. So you're going to have 11 and then 22 and then from 22 to 30, the answer is going to be 8 because that's the difference there. So if it was um, 40 mod 11, then it would be 11, 22, 33, and then you would have from 33 to 47 left over. Or if it was what is 15 mod 11, the difference would be 4. So you're basically just getting the remainder of that. So the answer again is 8. Question 25. Which of the following are symmetric stream ciphers? Well, the symmetric stream ciphers are RC4 and ChaCha. RC4 uh, is a 40-bit minimum recommended. It's one round, and it's very weak encryption for wireless technology. Now, ChaCha, that, is, that was invented by uh, Google, and what they call it is ChaCha20 because it has 20 rounds in there. Um, it's typically about three times faster than AES um, software encrypted, and they do use it with TLS connections. Now, DEAR, that is a acronym that we use to help remember some of the asymmetric encryptions. So D on the DEAR stands for DSA, for Digital Signature Algorithm. E stands for L-GAML. The next E stands for Elliptical Curve Cryptography. Elliptical Curve Cryptography. And the R stands for RSA. Now, C32 braids. That is another acronym to help remember all the symmetric algorithms. And this is going to help you a lot. So C, that stands for cast. 3, that stands for triple des. So 3, D-E-S. 2, stands for two fish. B, stands for blowfish. The R stands for RC4. 
like dash six, because there's RC4 and six. A stands for AES, I stands for IDEA, D stands for DES, and then S is means, hey, this is for a cement, this is all symmetric here. So that'll help you remember the different asymmetric and then the symmetric algorithms. So again, the answer is RC4 and cha-cha. What is meant by key size for question number 26? Well, the key side, it refers to the number of bits in a key used by a cryptographic algorithm. And then rounds is the number of iterations or cycles of processing that a cryptographic algorithm applies to the input data using a cryptographic key. So this is key length. And this is key rounds. And the larger the the more number of rounds and the larger the key length, the stronger the encryption. However, um, a negative of using too much encryption is that it's going to take maybe too much processing power. It's going to slow down the network. And so companies trying to find a nice balance between uh, strong protection for the company as well as fast network speed. So again, the answer for number 26, it refers to the number of bits in a key used by a cryptographic algorithm. Question 27, what, what is meant by block size? So block size determines the size of the fixed length of blocks of data that the encryption algorithm processes at a time. The second option here, a ledger of transactions that allows, that offers several unique features, including transparency, security, immutability, decentralization, and can be public or private. That's talking about blockchain technology. Uh, a very famous one that you've probably heard of is Bitcoin. And that's a blockchain technology that uses uh, that is public. Again, the answer to question number 27 is determines the size of the fixed length blocks of data that can be encrypted um, at the algorithm process at a time. Question 28, which wireless security standard uses a 128 bit stream cipher for encrypted communications? The answer is WPA, which replaced WEP and it took care of some of those vulnerabilities that they uh, initially had there. Now we did talk about WEP and VPN earlier, so now we're gonna take a look at GSM, which stands for Global System for Mobile Communications, and was is it's now outdated, but that was used with 2G um, phones. However, now they use LTE to protect the 4G LTE. So the answer again to question number 28 is WPA. Now for question 29, employee, Paris Wolf, that's me, sends an email to employee C. What does employee C use to decrypt the message from Paris Wolf? So my system is going to get the public key for employee C from the public key infrastructure, and it's gonna encrypt that email with employee C's public key, and then when employee C receives that email, they're going to decrypt it with their private key. So the answer is employee C's private key. Now, if employee C was sending me an email, they would encrypt the email with my public key, and then I would decrypt it with my private key. Question 30. What is an example of asymmetric encryption? So if you remember earlier from the C32 braids, those were the symmetric encryptions, and then the DIR. So RSA is an asymmetric encryption, and the MD, that stands for message digest, which is a hashing algorithm, because it goes in there, eats the message, and then spits it out, and then HA is also a hashing algorithm, and we know hashing is not encryption. So that really leaves us just here with the RSA. Again, the answer for number 30 is RSA.